Greetings and welcome to Quests and Chaos. My name is Alondra Heilman, my pronouns are she, her, and tonight I will be your heist handler as we continue our playthrough of Keys from the Golden Vault. Tonight brings us the first part of Prisoner 13, our level four adventure of the Golden Vault. We do not have uh, oh, we do have a sponsor tonight. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, some housekeeping to get out of the way. First of all, I want to acknowledge friend of the channel, Nord Games. You can find great supplements for your D&D games or your system agnostic games at nordgamesllc.com slash 3.html. We used them to humorous effect on uh, Saturday and they might show up again in this game at some point. We are sponsored tonight by the Deck of Inspiration. We do use this a lot in this game. We have even started dipping into everyone's favorite part of the deck of inspiration, the DUI, the deck of uninspiration, when people piss me off and I punish them for it. <laughs> you can get your own copy at shop.questsandchaos.com. And I've heard tell that if we get a very big raid tonight, we might be doing a giveaway. Leading in from the Deck of Inspiration, we have cards from the Deck of Inspiration. These are granted by our wonderful patrons to our players. Uh, they didn't use enough of them last time, so we still have a bunch, and I think we've got some more to come. So this is the handful that you guys have residual for this month. Wow, Whoa. so many. And you will be receiving... Oh, we, I did get mostly invisible last game. Oh, you so. did get most invisible. Okay, I think these were not correctly sorted. Apologies. That's, That's right. Fine. That was... You did yeah, spend a lot of the turn, last time invisible. Boosted region. Okay. You will also be receiving three more oh from my our gosh. lovely patrons. One from Shadow Child and two from NGC457. Thank you, thank you. Just seeing from here. Wow. So, please uh, take a quick look at all of your cards yeah. if you want to read off the new ones that have been distributed and then uh, divvy them out. Each of you may hold one card and the rest will go into the pool to be drawn from mm -hmm. uh, as you use those. So, I got here, boosted swiftness. When consumed, your speed is doubled and your AC is raised by plus two for one <laughs> minute. This blue potion seems to swirl around faster and faster. I definitely think that should be monkey. I was going to say, don't you want to see a monkey running around with 80 feet per room for six seconds? Because I do. <laughs> I don't. Yes. Okay. Guiding light. You ask for guiding light from the gods. For a moment, you see a faint glow in the direction of Prisoner 13. <laughs> and you sense an estimate of how far away they are. Papa, can you hear me? Is this the only time that the players have ever gotten guiding light on this channel? I feel, I feel like it always goes to the GM. I feel like we've gotten it once on this side, but it's so rare because usually the GM is the one who draws Wait, it. And then we we're just sitting it, on it forever. I think we drew it um, at the arena. And yes, then, and, 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 then, and then I said, everything that you yeah. need is here. Give me that back. Yes, yes. you are very generous. Okay. Uh -huh. We also have critical strike. Change a regular hit into a critical hit. You must succeed on the attack before using this card. Mm. Very cool. Hopefully. Excellent. All right, well, I have dibs on boosted swiftness. Mm. Mm -hmm. We also have vital strike. Reroll any number of damage dice in a single attack or spell. You have to use a second roll. Scarlet Minotaur. Bears Endurance and Boosted Regen. It's a brand safe Red Bull. Oh my god, I love that. I think I will take a pop of the Boosted Regen unless oh, somebody. I'm taking Scarlet. I'm sorry. This yeah. is the Warlock right, written all right. over it. It does have Warlock written all over it. I need to find this one. Uh, okay, well, maybe I'll take Guiding Light. Cool. Just because. Put it know, in the right direction. I feel like we're going to need it. We might. Woohoo! Yes. Okay, and everything else will go into the pool to be drawn from as cards are probably not used. We always have more cards than we can conceivably use. We will use but them. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I also have three cards that I am sitting on for this month. I have Surgical Strike, Elemental Reaction, and every GM's favorite, Magical Key. So I can unlock any door! Yay! Yay. It is. I, 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 I still, I still hold that that is one that, that the GM should be able to to redraw. We talked about this with Thomas uh, last time. We might, we might rejigger some of the rules for GM cards, but not tonight. Tonight, we're just going to distribute a couple of bits, and then we're going to get into our story. Uh, we have one thousand bits 
from the Baroness. Thank you, hey. Baroness. Wherever she may be. Oh, Somebody has to make eye contact with me. <laughs> 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 Rules of stage combat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Unlike some GMs on this channel, I wait for eye contact, or at least I try to. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're just going to get to introductions as we introduce your characters, because we've seen everybody here before on this game. Stick around. Oh, late breaking bits that I happen to glance down and see, so I'll do them now. And a thousand bits from Duke Fleeg. Thank you, Your Grace. 500 to you, and 500 to me. Oh. Slightly less thank you. <laughs> <laughs> tricksy, tricksy. We appreciate it. All right, and with that, I think we dive right in, yes? Mm -hmm. Last time we met, our harrowed heisters were deep in a place called Delphi Mansion, searching for the stolen celestial, co co celestial codex that was a tongue twister and also possibly being used to summon a horrifying entity from the Far Realms. The team faced off with a hook-handed horror, a persnickety ghost, a milfy sorceress turned eldritch entity, an evil mage, and each other before finally successfully securing the stolen tome and beginning the journey back to their respective home bases with the help of the ubiquitous bartender, Dave. So for our adventurers, once again, things have been calm for some time, each of them returning back to their daily lives. But for the operatives of the Golden Vault, there is rarely any rest. Things which have begun to stir in the plains continue to move. And as more operatives are brought into the vault's secrets, more questions arise about whether everyone's motivations are truly what they say they are. It's been a few weeks since the Delphi Mansion incident. Uh, and in that time, Sloane, you have reconnected with Gemma. Hey! What have you been doing for the last month or so? Uh, well, Gemma and I have started a business together. Well, technically I brought them in on the thing that I was already doing, but... Secondary... Partners, partners. we partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, Sloan's thing is, yeah, they run a jewelry shop, but on the side they work with cat burglars and jewel thieves in the area to acquire specific items and, um sell those items for a profit. So we have a four-tiered system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you like to talk yeah, about a four-tiered sure. system? <laughs> uh, we've got your standard gem removal, and then we'll melt down any leftover metals for you. Uh, tier two, we can actually reshape the jewelry for you, make it useful again. Uh, tier three, we'll reshape and also replace the gemstones with maybe some not as good quality. <laughs> we'll make stones. like a like a dupe that you can Duplicate. shift it out for. Uh, and then tier four, which is our most expensive tier, we will uh, fence your items for you. <laughs> Without altering them in any way, because that's the hardest to do. So we've been working on that for a while. And um, also, weirdly, like, randomly learning things and then trying to remember them. <laughs> and like Gemma's been helping me with flashcards, flash just <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Sloan, your your memory really has been improving uh, in the last few in the last few weeks. Um, and Gemma, you've you've had a pretty easy time of it. You haven't heard too much from your mom, aside from the occasional texts here and there. So you've just been able to settle in. Yeah, get, get in with the business and not worry too much about it. You do keep terrifying that one squirrel. He's like really getting traumatized. You tried moving to another tree and it's... I mean, why are you here? Still there, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 that was the same day that he wanted to move to a different tree. Someday mm. I'll just adopt him, but it's not today. Yeah. Um, so you are at uh, the shop, the Silver Anvil, one day, probably sitting in the back working on... Uh, your business, maybe doing the books, maybe cooking the books. Um, and there's a little knock on your office door. Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is Johnny, um, uh, I got a package for you. Were you expecting delivery? No. Is it big? Uh, no, it's pretty small, but it seems kind of important. Okay. 
I drop what I'm doing. I open the door. Give. Hands you a little paper wrapped box. Who dropped it off? A, a, a rabbit? Ah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put on <laughs> some gloves that I have tried to tinker with and make them um, um, teleport proof. <laughs> We've learned our lessons from previous episodes. <laughs> okay, thanks, Johnny. You're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Uh. There's another one. It's for 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 Mix Gemma. Okay. Okay. I don't know why it was here, but it came at the same time. I it, uh, I don't know if they're she's coming. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. Later. They're gonna come okay. by later today. So okay. I'll set it over here. You, cool. Okay. I'm gonna take my break now. Okay. All right. Don't forget to lock the door. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Are you okay? No. Uh. Yeah. No. Just the rabbit was real. Polite. Toothy? Yeah, a toothy. To thank you. Okay, God. Yeah. I thought I was hallucinating. Okay. No, no, you're all right, dear. Go take your break. Get cool. some tea or something. Cool. As uh, Johnny is leaving, getting ready to lock the door, mm. Gemma walks up, lets you in. Johnny? Uh, there's a there's a package for you in the back with uh, mixed citron. Great, thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Gemma, come here. Is he okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, um, hyacinth. Oh. Yeah, with the... And the yeah. yeah. We'll close the door. Yeah. Lock the door. Okay, don't don't touch yours yet. Maybe. I'm gonna like put on those gloves and start to carefully unwrap the package. You unwrap the package that is addressed to you and inside you see a beautiful wooden box inlaid with gold filigree. You've seen a box like this before. Minwoo has one. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I, I, I touch the box. It's a box. Is there, okay. <laughs> is there anything <laughs> on like box. the box other than the gold filigree? Any other? Kind there is of... this beautiful filigree, and as you kind of turn around, you see that on one side there is a very blatant keyhole outlined in gold trim. That is the only thing about it. Otherwise, it's just a lovely decorative box. Okay, okay, all right. I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna take off the gloves. I'm gonna hand the gloves to Gemma. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm <just gonna laughs> pick it up. Unwrap. You unwrap uh, your box a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, and you open it up, and inside yours is a golden key. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Putting the <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Can I ask about the gloves? Okay. Well, <laughs> so amazing. I've been experimenting, mm -hmm. like I usually do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if, you know how, like, Things get weird whenever we touch things from Priscilla, and we just kind of go <laughs> and appear somewhere else. Like one time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like that was not fun. So these are like insulating gloves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you, you shake, mm -hmm. you, you, you've seen, and then it goes. And that's not good. We don't like that. So these prevent. Things from ha I don't know if they actually work. I'm just testing them out. So if they don't work, then we're fucked. Great. I would like to put the key in the box. Yeah, you put the key in the box. You're gonna turn it. Yeah, turn it. The top of the box, roll of filigree, is swirls open. This golden light glows and appears. It just sort of like lights up, and you Didn't hear teleport. And you Yet. hear a somewhat familiar voice. Greetings, operatives. We have discovered the location of a great dwarven treasure, but only a prisoner incarcerated within the prison Revel's End knows how to access the vault. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to travel to the prison, infiltrate it, and learn how to access the treasure from the prisoner. Return this information to a dwarf whom you will meet, known as Varen Axebreaker, who will brief you on the details of the mission. If you wish to accept, you may meet us at the Scholar's... Oh, you know the place. Good luck, operatives. The light dims, the top of the box closes. They never give a time on these things. No. <laughs> they never are like, at 4 p.m. <laughs> on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, just walk in. Yeah. They just tell you to go there. I, I guess they, they expect you to drop everything immediately. <sighs> yep, okay. You're right. <laughs> Everything no, okay? I just, it's the, like, this, it, I feel like everyone all the time expects you to just drop everything and, and go, so, 
You know, it's a everyone. It is what it is. All the time. Everyone all the time. Okay. That feels like a lot to unpack, but maybe not maybe. right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go for a walk. All right. Uh, Sloane and Gemma, you head out to uh, head to the bar. Mm-hmm. Risha. Yes. It's been a couple of months since that casino job that you were on. Finally got uh, the last of the glitter out of my firm. Yeah, it's so, oh man, it's been a task. Every time you think you've got it and you wake up and there's more. It's like, how? Um, what have you been doing in the last couple of months to uh, make ends meet? What have you been, what have you been up to? Mostly keep, keeping low, keeping the ear out, figuring out, you know, I've, I've now got... I now have money, which is really nice, which means I have to be very careful about it. So there's little, uh, there's little stashes uh, that they can access all over the city. Um, and they've been spending their time building up a bit of a whisper network, learning more about what's going on in the city. They've got their, they've got their little birdies all over the place that they, sit, that they chat with now and again, just getting the lay of the land. Yeah, and uh, there there have indeed been some whispers that you've been picking up. Probably specific whispers that you asked them to listen out for. There mm. are the rumor mill is spiraling. Uh, there's been strange things happening at the museum that people have been asking a lot of questions about. The uh, the uh, curator was sacked after a massive theft and is raving that it wasn't her fault. Um, I feel bad for about two seconds and then don't anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you hear other things. And one rumor that keeps popping up that is a, a little bit odd and concerning is that people keep reporting seeing a strange tentacled beast that disappears into the shadows. And when they go to look for it, the only thing they find is a rabbit. The more that I keep hearing about this, the more I'm just like... All right, I'm going to need a description on this rabbit, and and tell people especially to look out for uh, especially toothy bunnies. Yeah. And that is what comes back to you today, as uh, one of your contacts, a uh, halfling who works in the market, uh, but doesn't mind uh, just listening in and reporting back interesting things, um, finds you. Uh, probably as you're out for a walk, maybe doing your shopping, whatever that looks like, and she goes, uh, hey, hey, Risha, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you know that, that thing that you wanted to, uh, you wanted us to kind of keep an eye out for? Or yeah. Or, yeah, so I heard, um, I got a buddy who works at a jewelry shop down the way, and he said, uh, there was a black and white rabbit that dropped off packages there earlier today had a lot of teeth like not normal rabbit teeth like weird teeth hmm and i don't know if that's what you were asking us to listen for but uh kind of kind of sounded like some of the stuff you've mentioned yeah that's uh, that's exactly what i'm what i'm looking for do you know uh, what shop uh it's called the silver anvil uh yeah it's uh it's down on the on the east side hmm have I heard much about the Silver Anvil? I don't know if I know that these two were connected to it. Uh, you, but... you know, you would know that the Silver Anvil is Sloane's shop. Okay. You spent time there playing Three Dragon Ante. You <laughs> yeah. Wasn't wasn't sure if the shop had been established. Uh, no, in the shop by then. The shop's been longer than you've known. Okay. So. I'm like, hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you for for this and slip, uh, slip over a silver. I will keep my ear to the ground, much, metaphorically. Much obliged. Have fun with the weird rabbit thing. Somehow not the strangest thing that I've seen the last few months. Strange, but yes. All right, and I'll, like, I'll saunter off in that direction because if Hyacinth is making deliveries to, uh, to Sloan, there's something going on and I want to know what it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception check to decide. What? Dice? Yeah, I know. In an <laughs> Alondra game, even. Wild. Yeah. Uh, perception. Oh, that's a 23. 23. Oh, yeah. Um, you are quickly able to spot, as you're making your out, you spot Sloane and Gemma headed in a direction that you know all too well, because <laughs> you've spent plenty of time down at the bar. Oh, yeah. With Dave. Oh, yeah. So I'll... Uh, dart to, to, to catch up with them. Uh, if anyone's watching, it, it, it goes from like this loose, easy saunter to just, 
and suddenly right next to Sloane's knee. <laughs> so that client that came in, right. hey. oh my god, hi, <laughs> yeah. how's it going? Uh, hanging in there, keeping busy. How about, how about you two? Yeah, oh, same. Yeah. Pretty good. I Business heard, is good. I heard that uh, a certain fuzzy friend made a delivery. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you need a job? I'm curious. All right, we're headed to go in for a drink. The Sage's Quill, yeah. if you want to come along. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Don't know if uh, uh, Miss Pris is, is is going to to like having me along. She didn't invite me, but you know. Whatever, she'll get <laughs> over it. It's fine. <laughs> You're cool. You know, Petey. You gotta be cool. <laughs> I do know Petey. It's uh yes. Yeah, let's uh, let's go get a drink. Awesome. Can ask Dave what he's been up to. <laughs> yes, please. I want to know. The three of you head to the Sage's Quill to get a drink with Dave and try to figure out what's going on. Mm. Min Wu, after the uh, the mansion job, where'd you go? Did you just head straight back to the village or? Ah, uh, you know, head straight back to the dock, do some work, but I feel like at this moment, I just see Min Wu, he's, what you would see <laughs> is an endless ocean of water and then poof, a head pops up as he walks along the sand and in his hand is this waterlogged tabaxi <laughs> that he just throws on the beach. Why do they keep sending you on jobs where you have to swim? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I didn't know that they could do that. Did you not have eight legs? Yes. How are you the most uninformed operative that they've ever sent? And how do they keep getting you jobs? They don't, I don't know. They said they needed a wizard, so I volunteered. Oh, jeez. And he's going to, like, <laughs> plop back in the sand. One moment. And he's going to reach in his pocket, pull out a stone. Hey, baby, sorry. It's really busy this morning. Um, just want you to know that everything's okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, this was an interesting one. Yeah, the tabaxi. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a strange one again. Yeah, but all good. All good. Uh, yeah, I'll send more over later. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, God. And then sits back up and just sees ocean. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Do you know where we are? No. Do. As a wizard, would you know how to get us back to where we need to go? I'm not that kind of wizard, unfortunately. What kind of wizard are you? <laughs> this kind! He flings out his hand and just fire shoots into the <laughs> sand. <laughs> on a boat! <laughs> I wasn't shooting it on the boat! <clears throat> Think of your skill set! It's not swimming! <laughs> it's not swimming, and all you can do is throw fire on a wooden ship? I wasn't supposed to throw the fire on the wooden ship. I was supposed to throw the fire at the thing that was trying to collapse the wooden ship. You confound me. <laughs> Look, man, no I'm way. just trying to make a buck. So am I, but I also know when jobs are appropriate for my skill oh, set. I can also make a buck. Waves his hands and suddenly a deer appears. <laughs> oh my god. Can I eat it? Uh, for the next hour, but you're going to feel really bad. Oh, afterwards. okay. Starts taking stock, looks at the sand dune they're on in the middle of the ocean. Uh, the, I'm calm. The tabaxi like pats around in their vest and pulls out a very damp business card with a golden key on it. It's like, do you want me to just call? I can just call it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Flicks the card. The card, despite its waterloggedness, starts to glow, pulses a couple of times, and then whoosh, you're enveloped in light. You feel that jarring teleport feel. Um, and you find yourself in what looks to be kind of on the outskirts of a major city. Like, like right at that point where like, there's like kind of the tree line where like the park or the forest comes right up to the edge of the habitation, discreet enough that it would be a place where you might put a teleport, uh, rune 
where it's not gonna get stumbled into, but it's accessible. Look, buddy. Next time you grab a job, just inquire if I'm going to be on that job. <laughs> and then we can hopefully not work together again. Yep, super down with that. I will ask if it's you and I will ask if it's water. That's a step. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> yes, you s that. Yeah. <coughs> and also spits up seawater. Uh, oh God, I oh, hate when they burns. teleport us. I hate when they teleport us, yeah. especially after the water. Okay. Oh, that burns. <sighs> yeah, okay. Uh, well, um, which direction are you going? And I will go in the exact opposite direction. We're off the job. You want to go get a drink or yeah, something? Yeah, okay. Um, I think, I think we're at Varkenheim, so I know a bar if you want to go to a bar. Yeah, let's go. Okay. <sighs> and just begrudgingly start, starts walking. Everything is still soaked <laughs> as he plods through the gate, just like, hey, Charlie. Yeah, nope. <laughs> yeah. You guys make your way through the city. Um, the tabaxi, as they kind of shake off, just kind of like starts to poof. Because <laughs> they're still also very wet, but can't do much about it. Shakes his um, mop of hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the uh, tabaxi will lead you to uh, a bar called the Sage's Quill. You are immediately concerned because the uh, people you see entering this bar immediately in front of you are uh, wearing long red robes and carrying massive spell books. <sighs> no, 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 I promise it's fine. Like, this is, it's, it's a vault place. They're, it's fine, it's safe. I'm not concerned if it's a vault place. <laughs> we just got off a job. And I, I was trying to make friends here, buddy, with you to like, just get a drink and know we're cool. Right, so I went to a bar where we don't have to worry about anybody recognizing us from jobs or something like that. Okay, okay. Do, Do you want to go to the college bar? There's a college no, bar down let's there. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he leads you into the bar. Uh, Risha, Sloan, and Gemma, you all have uh, tucked yourselves into a corner booth. Uh, where Dave is slinging you your usual pitcher of whatever. Thank you, Dave. Yum. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, and Minwoo, as you enter, you scan. Uh, this is kind of a weird place. There is one table that is clearly a bunch of college frat bros, um, like, playing some low-key version of a drinking game. The two red-robed mages are sitting in a different corner table, and there is a uh, door closed that goes into a back room that has a sign on that says, uh, no admittance cult business. Just straight out. Wow. That is... The, hmm. Yep. Hmm. <clears throat> It's a mix of vibes I'm getting here, and... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, but the drinks are really good, and the bartender's great. Okay, you know, that, that that's a good conversational oh. mediator. Hey, Risha! And... Uh, Risha, you look over, and uh, you see Bev, one of your spy network. They're a tabaxi. You've worked with them a couple of times. Bev, you're soaking wet! Yeah! Yeah! What happened? Did you go out on a water job again? They didn't tell me it was a water job until after I'd taken it. Bev, you have to ask before you take the job. So I have been informed. Uh, uh, Risha, this is uh, Min Woo. He's oh my god, it's Min Woo! Hey. hey! How's it going? It's Hi, Min Woo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I overheard Risha. Risha, yeah. Good to meet you. This is Gemma. Gemma, nice to meet you. Min Woo. Min Woo. Sloan. Hey. Hey. You, you know, last job, yeah. how me and uh, Timelock were talking about the tabaxi who couldn't swim. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is this is Bev. Oh! Hi. Hi, Hi Bev. Bev! You're famous, or is it infamous? Uh, yeah, I've only heard that you can't swim, but I'm sure you have other talents. I can make fire! That's great! We That's always great need fire! <laughs> yeah, uh... Right? Speaking of which, I'm gonna go see if Dave will let me, like, you know, 
dry off in a back room real quick because yeah. this is kind of. Uh, yeah. I would like to press a digitation. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Please. Great. Just like pull the water out of the fur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the college frat bros is just like, oh, oh, do you need me to, and does a shape water to pull the rest of the water out of your hair and just like sucks it over and like Ugh. drops it in the drain behind the bar. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Got you, man. Thanks. Stay dry. Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10, no notes. But keep those lips wet, kid, with a. A. Yeah. Uh, we got a we got a picture going here if you want to join us. Sure, Bev, you want to sit in on this one? I, I, yeah, come join us. Okay, yeah, sure. Can I two more at Dave? <laughs> uh, yeah, Dave uh, glances, walks over, puts down two more glasses, like, hey, okay, I'll just pull up a chair when she gets here. Then, cool, 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 cool. Looks like the party's uh, expanding. Great. <laughs> uh, we'll see how. Sorry, who is getting? Yeah. The rabbit. Um, Ms. No. Tyga. Oh, okay. I thought it was the other person. I, I didn't. Are, do you have Do you have more contacts now? Uh, I was told by Ms. Tyga that she was meeting you all here. Okay, we did it with that. That was not specified, so that's good. Sure, sure, that's sure. That's great. Sure. Cool. Nice. Tight. Amazing. Um, you sit down. You're able to get through about half a drink when uh, suddenly Dave comes over again. It's like, hey, we're gonna move to the back. Ooh. Great, I will take the picture. Uh, <laughs> cool. And he ushers the four of you Clean up the three dragon anti game. Into not the room with the cult business sign, but a different back room. Aww. You know that there are Other several here. <laughs> there, there are quite a few. Um, ushers you into another back room. Um, waves the four of you in and then kind of catches Bev, who's like last in the line and goes, Hey, you should come with me, buddy. I got a great drink I want to try. And like does that like very bartenderly redirect of spinning Bev around, closing the door behind him, and the two of them leave you. Bye, Bev. In this room, sitting at a table, which also has a pitcher ready to go on it, yes. um, you see <laughs> two figures. One you recognize, most of you recognize, um, a tall, uh, pale, white-haired elven woman, who you, three of you know as Priscilla Tyga. And she looks rough. You know elves don't sleep, but if they did, you would assume she hasn't in a very long time. She looks tired and her skin is a lot more blue, that almost translucent, tired blue than you've ever seen it before. And with her uh, is a gray-haired dwarf. Hair is braided back very neatly, very formally. He's kind of in like the dress best, if you will, for a meeting, who also looks not tired, in the same way, not as haggard, but definitely a little concerned and a little bit anxious. And they're sitting in this back corner and Priscilla waves, oh good, uh, you got my note and uh, well, that's convenient. Fewer people that I have to go round up, I suppose. Come in, sit down. Uh, let's talk about some work. All right. Yeah. Sure. Have a seat. Go and perch, and perch on one of the chairs. Ah, uh, Minwu, I thought you were up by the, uh... Yeah, no, that one was a botched job, unfortunately. Bev? Yeah. Why do they keep sending him on water jobs? Okay, I'll have a word with the, um... Couldn't the vault just teach him how to swim? We tried. Okay. Okay. I think, I think next time we're just going to give him a... Some sort of magical item of water breathing? Yes, <laughs> probably. Flotation. Re <laughs> Little water wing. Yeah. Or job on land. I, 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 I honestly, I'd rather just send him on a normal land job than give up a cloak of the manta ray. So we'll see what we can do. Um, anyway, have a seat. We'll um, discuss work. Yes? Yeah. 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 Um, well, uh, I imagine you got my voicemail um, for the rest of you. Uh, this is... Uh, Varen uh, Axebreaker, who has come to us um, with uh, an interesting proposition. Um, Varen, perhaps you'd like to take it from here. <clears throat> uh, the dwarf kind of like gets up to bow to you and then sits back down. Uh, I will reciprocate. <laughs> I'll just pour him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> like a very awkwardly stand, like... <laughs> 
uh, uh, sit back down. He like again. nods an acknowledgement, <laughs> like not expected but appreciated, and goes, uh, uh, "Thank you. Uh, I'm very an axe breaker. I have very important proposition. You see, many years ago, um, my clan, axe breaker clan, has great fortune stolen from us by member of clan, and." Um, we have finally found the location of treasure after many, many years of searching. However, key to treasure is with the thief. She is only one who knows how to open this vault and she has been long imprisoned in Revel's End, the great prison above the spine of the world. She has never before cooperated with our efforts to retrieve treasure, but Perhaps now that we know where treasure is and all we need is key, she can be persuaded to exchange her information. Persuaded can mean many things. Of course, you understand. I think so. Per trade information for what? If she's in prison, what she's gonna do with any share of the treasure? That this thing, I do not entirely know. She has no reason to hold on to treasure. She has no access to it. She will be in Revel's End until end of her days. But still, she does not tell us. So we think maybe there is something she wants. Maybe can be discovered, be negotiated. Or if maybe it... she's just, if I can't have it, neither can you. In that case, negotiations can perhaps turn hostile. <laughs> Is that why I'm being brought on this one? Uh, Priscilla looks, I think you're being brought on because you're here, but uh, we can talk more about that later. Okay, just... I, truly, I didn't think you were around. I was trying to get a hold of, uh, of uh, Stuart Shonery, but he hasn't picked up my, uh, my business card yet. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 just... Keeping in mind my skill set here, it just sounds like it's a pretty... Uh, Pretty big one. Uh, it, it, it will it will be a big job with potentially a very large payout if you are successful. Um, uh, Master Axebreaker has offered to cut you in on a percentage of what treasure is contained within this secret cache. Leans a bit <laughs> more forward to that. Risha looks very impressed and just sits back in their chairs. Mm. Okay. Um, I have a few questions. Yes. Uh, why did she steal it in the first place? Because she is a terrible person. Oh, okay. She... <laughs> Axe Breaker Clan was very uh, close. We run, uh, you may have heard of it, Gontel Grim Fort. A great bastion of defense against... Giants and other monsters has served as bastion against encroaching winter that overtakes Icewind Dale. Uh, but uh, she was one of our best operatives, you what might say, and uh, turns out was only working for herself. Is there anything we should know about her going in? Uh, she is terrible and very good at keeping silent. We have used both magical and physical means to attempt to gain information from her before uh, was sent to prison. Could not break her. Had great power before. Do not know how much she has now. Imagine it has not all been gone. What kind of power? Magic. Ah. Great. Uh, what's a name? They call her Prisoner 13. Okay, what's her name? <laughs> we do not speak her name. She is dead to us. There are very few, few left You read it note. on a paper? <laughs> it might be dangerous to tell you. Okay. If she knows you know her name, she will know you have spoken to me or one of the clan. Would I, given that I grew up with a dwarven person. Would I know uh, anything about Dwarven culture and, like, speaking someone's name that the clan has shunned? Uh, give me a history check. Okay. Hmm. This 
pretty good. Uh, 19. 19. Um, not every dwarven clan does this, but you do know that there is a tradition in some dwarven clans where, like, name names have particular significance, and so um, if someone has wronged the clan, they're then no longer allowed to use their name. Like, the, the clan no longer uses their name because they are not worthy of being gifted one. Um, there's a lot of other naming culture elements where you might uh, stop using a name because a dwarf has chosen to give up that name for another one, where it's a celebrated thing. In this case, it's more of a, you know, rejection of that person. Um, and not not all clans do it, but a Gauntle Grim, you know, is up in the high far north. It's a lot more isolated, and so there's a lot more of those older traditions that have stayed in place. Okay. 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 So other than being, I'm assuming, outfitted for the far north, um, anything to know about Rebel's End? and getting into such a place. Uh, Rebel's End. Great, largest prison in Faerun. Yes, uh, up in far north above Spine of the World. Isolated, once you go in, rarely come out. I mean, you can, but it's long process. No one goes there who is going to be in prison for only a short amount of time. Uh, is uh, on the edge of Sea of Moving Ice. Built as a, you call a panopticon, can be seen from every angle, no privacy. You can uh, approach it from uh, sea if you wish to go into Luskan. You can come in by air if you have flight, or you can travel by foot. Uh, right on the edge of Windbreaker Cliffs, so not quite all the way into ten towns where you must contend with the endless winter. But, you know, still going to be cold, so Dress bring your cold. jacket. <laughs> um, is run by Council of Lords Alliance, representative council member from each major city, sit council to oversee trials or hear uh, pleas for uh, mercy, things like that. Okay. Hmm. How, I'm sorry, how long has she been there? Uh, very long time. All right, that's uh, yeah. I mean, that was a nice overview, but how are we yeah, like getting how we, into? How do we get it? Do we get prison. it? Prisoners? Are they hiring by scale wall? Which sounds well, um, I mean, Winter? I can give you this to start. Uh, Varen reaches into a pocket and pulls out a sapphire. Big old sapphire gem, sets it in the middle of the table, waves his hand over it, and you see a map Ooh. up here, at which point I will give Ooh. you props! Yay! <laughs> this is the map that uh, you are shown. What oh, is just the bottom floor? <laughs> Uh, yes, I think they do it numerically, start and bottom, work way up, and uh, so Prisoner 13 has been there a long time. Do not know about Prisoners 1 through 12, but uh, she is on the ground floor. Um. Now I see why I'm being brought on, pointing towards, <laughs> on the map, the anti-magic field. Hey, samesies. Hey. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can, uh, so map to start with, uh, I can, I have spent time around prison, I can attempt to give you more, uh, specific information about certain things. I know there is a rotation of guards if you, you are hologram. trying to sneak. Yeah, it's a hologram this time, guys. So cool. So high tech here in the Dungeons and the Dragons. Um. Sorry, you were saying... Uh, there are guards that rotate around, have regular schedule, uh, can provide you that. Um, she must have key we need to vault on her or no, be only one who knows location. Yes, so we must either get information or key itself. Um, you can request meeting with prisoner. 
through the governors, but I do not know if they will grant it, uh, and they will observe. So if you wish to speak about secret dwarven treasure, they will then know about secret dwarven treasure, which preference that not know, but uh, do what you got to do, yeah? Um, uh, the Axebreaker clan can provide some swift transit out by leaving ship at docks near cliffs, but um, we have been in before to speak with her formally and informally and have never gotten anywhere, which is why we have asked Golden Vault to help. How did you get in informally? Very carefully. Have uh, sneaky rogues. You've not heard of a dwarf rogue much, have you? We have many. I have a couple. Sorry, you have a couple? I was actually hoping no one would notice the wording on that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me not notice wording on things? <laughs> Unfortunately, me. everyone in this group is incredibly sharp. I mean, fortunately for me, since I'm hiring you, unfortunately, if you're trying to keep any secrets at this table. Fair. <clears throat> I'll tell you about it later. Okay. All right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. So, prisoners, do they just stay in their cell all of the time? And do they, uh, aside from, like, going to... I imagine the mess. Do they? Do you know any kind of a rotation with the prisoners themselves? Do they go outside at all? Do they? Yeah, outside sounds like a great time. It's, outside <laughs> is so much easier than this nonsense. But, uh, not wrong. Some prisoners taken outside for work duty. Not this one. Too high risk. Stay inside all time. Uh, leave cell. I think for you know, shower mess recreation, whatever that is. I assume up north uh, recreation is shaking fist at Sky and screaming at Frost Maiden, but uh, that's what we do for fun. That sounds right. Um. Oh, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> Curse you, Arl! Give us back our sunlight! And she does not listen. So what was she actually put in prison for? Like, I know what... For, for this... robbing us. We are... We run Wait, did greatest... you put her in prison? Yes. Well, no wonder she won't talk to you. Well, my clan, a whole clan, put her in prison. Yeah, she no wonder yeah, she won't no talk wonder... to the clan. <laughs> Look, dwarves have long family lineage and loyalty. We thought maybe we could appeal. Turns out she does not have any sensibility for her people. Well, when you refused to speak her name, yeah, I wouldn't have any, any we sensibility We refused to speak either. her name after she refused <laughs> to speak to us. Do not make judgments about our culture. I... <sighs> I don't know my own culture. I don't give a shit about anyone else's. Okay, so <laughs> we're bringing it back down. We're, I just want to know, ide what is your ideal situation? What would you love to have happen? She gives us key with little fuss. We regain whatever is left of treasure that she has not used. And we put all this behind us. And what are you willing to give her? To make that happen because she's not just gonna pull that out of her ass this is the thing we do not know <laughs> we do not know what she wants so we do not know what to offer she will not speak to anyone she has not made counter offer what are our like extreme terms here though are we talking prison break are you willing for that getting her out are you willing to i was thinking the same like, like uh, yeah her i think freedom? that's the question like what are you willing to put on the table for negotiation with her here is the thing she will not be accepted back even if i grant her passage back to clan clan will not accept her after what she has done if she wants to be broken out and you want to break her out and tell her to go set up shop down in chult or something do not care we will not come after her in that case, if that is what she wants. Uh, she has never made any attempt to appeal sentence. She has never gone before governors. She just seems to be fine. Okay, so you're fine with whatever happens to her. Yes. As long as we don't offer that she can come back to the clan. That's off the table. Pretty That's the only thing that we can't give her. 
You can try... If that is what she wants, you can bring back to us and we can negotiate. But I can tell you, most of clan will not go for it. Okay. So it's either you want us to go in and see if she'll talk to us and then come back and talk to you. Or you want to... See, see, here's my thing. Is, is I don't really want to go up to bumfuck nowhere. My apologies. No, Twice. it's pretty bad. <laughs> it was bad before Frostmaiden cast Eternal Winter and it just got worse from there. Okay, <sighs> well, I'm glad we can agree. But I don't want to go to bumfuck <laughs> Revel's End. Twice, if I can help it. So my thought is... We will have Agent there with you from, from Axebreaker Clan to help. Like, you do not have to come all the way back here to talk to me. Okay. Uh, you, will, you will be able to meet uh, uh, Bethra, Bethra, who can speak on behalf of Clan if you need to make negotiations. Okay, okay. I also assume that Golden Vault will give you some element of leverage or have some contact. Yes, Miss Tega? Um, Priscilla sort of nods vaguely. Of course, we always have something. Okay. All right. All right. So the only thing that's off the table that probably won't happen is getting her back in the clan, which she probably doesn't want anyway. I get the impression she is not interested in that anyway. What so. about sharing the treasure with her? Allowing her, if we break <gasps> her out, giving her a portion of the treasure so she could set herself up and not bother you any any time ever again. <sighs> You can't tell... I will put that on table. You cannot tell Bethra. Okay. How's that? I Look, I can, I can hide it, make it seem like it was part of your cut, make it seem like there was less there. Something, right? So that Clan does not have to know. Would really prefer not to. Again, cannot emphasize how much she absolutely shafted, like, thousands of people by stealing our entire treasure while we were in the middle of a war. But, like... That's a pretty shitty thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty bad. Also, lots of people died in process of her trying to, like, form coup steal treasure. I'm just saying, lots of bad blood. No, that totally makes sense. I'm just trying to get a lay of the land here. I'm not as familiar with the Axe Breaker clan. Of course. No, we are pretty isolated, so understandable. Okay. Do we have any more questions? I will put you in touch with Bethra, who can help you know more about the setup of prison. She has been scouting. Transportation. Minwoo mentioned gear. Mm. Uh, that That's is awesome. going to have to be for uh, Miss Taiga. Uh, we can help get you on ship up there. Take about three days, unless uh, you have faster travel available. Um, and we can, can help get you out. Can everyone swim? <laughs> yeah. I don't like to, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't worry, we won't be offering Bev this one. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bev. Just um. the entire time, Minwoo, we've just kind of been <laughs> eyeing up and down uh, Mr. Averin. Um, may I make an insight check? See if sure. he's just on the level with what he's saying. Absolutely. Nope. <laughs> What'd you get? That one. That one. Beautiful. Um, you're really distracted by his very cool, like, beard jewelry, mm. with, like, clips that he's got in, and and uh, things like that, and you just forget to, like, make eye contact to try to read his face. Are those actually an entwined, or are they, like, clip-on? Like... Oh, some of both. You see, these ones here we take off, and then you can separate out so that you can keep main braids, but then you can rearrange depending on occasion. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't... Like, I kind of get a bit of a scruff, but nothing to your volume. No, so it's... I've been cultivating this for hundreds of years. Takes a very long time. If you ever do grow a beard, I can recommend very good beard oil. Hey, that'd be helpful. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any more questions for uh, Master Axebreaker before we get down to the part where you inevitably try to shake me down for as uh, much gear and cash as I have available in my resources? <laughs> I... What did you guys do to her last time? <laughs> I haven't done nothing. I haven't done nothing to her. I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. I always ask Petey. <laughs> Petey's my guy. Petey's a good guy. Petey is great. Um, I don't, I don't think so. None that I can think of. I think we've Covered got the, quite a lot basics. of information now. Yeah. And I think we just got to make decisions. So, yeah. Nice to 
meet you, Mr. Axebreaker. Nice to meet you. I do appreciate you hearing out our cause and, uh, again, do understand if you choose not to take job. Job is very difficult, but uh, Ms. Tega assures me you are some of the most excellent operatives of Golden Vault, and uh, we have high hopes that you could perhaps achieve what we have failed to do. We will certainly endeavor to do our best. He, again, like, stands up fully, bows, uh, turns specifically to Priscilla, bows, uh, makes a weird little, like, genuflection of some sort in her direction, which she almost rolls her eyes at, and then turns and heads for the door. I will leave you all to discuss amongst yourselves. Uh, I will be at the bar talking to very handsome bartender uh, until you need me. Dave is awesome. Just tell him, like, what your vibe is, and he'll get you the right drink. You get the thumbs up, and he leaves the room. I would like to refill Priscilla's drink. <laughs> yeah, what and then it? just, uh, are you okay? Are you, yeah, are you doing all right? You are you okay? Little, you look very tired. I'm uh, terribly sorry. It's been... The last job I was on was a lot. Um, so we should work out the details of this, because I still have to go do a lot of paperwork. So do you own the bunny, or does the bunny own you? By the way, hi, I'm Min Wu. Hello. Um, your wife says hi. Immediately looking at Min Wu like... There's a <laughs> pause. Uh, is she, does she... Is she okay, or...? She's fine. Um, your family is very kind, even to strangers who probably don't deserve it, and uh, one good turn deserves another. There was a bit of a problem. It won't touch your family. Okay. okay. Nothing to worry about, I'm sorry. I know that sounds terribly ominous and threatening. It was coincidental, and I um, knew that there was a connection to an operative in the area, so I made sure to check in. Yeah, Didn't no. realize I was going to be seeing you so soon, but um, no, convenient. They're, yeah, they're, they're good people, so uh, yeah, no, glad that uh, my wife is teaching our daughter things right. <laughs> It was a lovely time, and I wish I could have uh, enjoyed it recreationally instead of on business. Mm. Well, um, anyway, uh, like I said, lots of paperwork. Um, how are we feeling about this job? I recognize it's a bit different than the usual, and a little bit higher stakes, and uh, probably just about as much information as we ever have on these things, so... Oh, God. Yeah. So... We're not going to try to break into the unbreakable prison, right? Like, that's just... No, breaking in is usually not the problem. It's breaking out that's generally the issue. Yeah, I, I may be covered in fur, but I don't want to stay in a, you know, in a frozen hellscape the rest of my life. No, definitely don't <laughs> recommend. Uh, that sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So do we try the direct approach? Do we try to just go in and say, hi, we want to talk to Prisoner 13? Uh, that sounds like a start. I mean, if we can just negotiate our negotiate our way through by being like, "Hey." The thing is, we gotta appeal first for an appointment, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have somebody watching the whole time. Um, I don't quite remember who's done what so far on our last few jobs for the rest of you, but I do know that we have. A handful of groups that have had great success with just, you know, going in as the caterers or something equivalent. There's a whole parcel of uh, employees there, um, you know, guards, cooks, laundry workers, things like that, that are allowed to go in and out, general so staff. So they are hiring. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> honestly, who wants to, like, who applies for a job I guess we in Icewind Dale That's is apparently. really the question. Um, um, but I mean, that's, that might be a possibility. I only say that because I know some of you are particularly good at, you know, being sneaky and deceptive. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how did your mother get my personal number? Because she's been texting me cocktail recipes. <laughs> she probably pulled it off of mine. I'm sorry. No, it's, I, no, it's fine. I was just curious no if you would talk. No, I, no, no. Quite all right. 
I'll introduce yeah. her to my father sometime. They'll get along like a house on fire. Quite literally, possibly. Oh, no survivors. My father usually doesn't leave any. It's too much of a mess. Ooh, wow, I don't <laughs> think we have time to unpack that. <laughs> Which part? All of it. Cool. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the shakedown. <laughs> yes, uh, you will be provided with uh, appropriate warm clothing um, okay. with protective layers inside of it, and all of that. Um, if you need access to equipment, you're mostly going to be on your own, I understand. Several of you have had very good payouts from the last few jobs, so hopefully you can manage that yourselves. We're a little bit stretched thin since the incident, so that's why I'm doing paperwork. I can't really talk about it yet. It's still... Non-disclosure. All right. Okay. I mean, where do we go to apply to? I I've never worked a day in do my life. No, just kidding. Walk up, like <laughs> yeah. You know, do I just show up, resume in hand, or just <gasps> show up and be like, we got hired back in whatever town they do hiring in. Who's gonna check? Well, in I mean, in addition to um, to uh, Master Alex Breaker's contact uh we do have i think one golden vault operative active in 10 towns i don't know if she's even accessible because of the whole eternal winter situation um and hopefully you won't have to go as far as 10 towns but i can try to get you in contact with her um imdra arlegeth she's the captain of the guard in one of them i don't remember which one i uh, haven't worked with her in years again endless winter <laughs> Sort of cut off communication. How long has Assemble's Winter been? Very long time. Oh. So far. Endless. <laughs> I mean, it had a beginning. I Presumably, because people remember a time from before. Let's see if Priscilla remembers when the Endless Winter began. <laughs> She's very tired. She does not. She's like, I, it's been a long time. And, uh, yes. Okay. Um. Well, I guess... We should get going. I guess the real question for all of you is, would you like to take a nice scenic boat trip up the Sword Coast, or shall I leave you with some of these? And she pulls out a handful of the business cards. Those. Definitely those. For sure those. Both? I mean, there's <laughs> no reason why we couldn't take the boat up and then yeah. have one of those available for high get us out of here fast. Just... Remember that there is an anti-magic field inside Revel's End, so you'll have to be outside of it in order to activate. Okay. Only as, as, long as, it, as long as it doesn't short out the, uh, the card yes, well, when it's past the room. Yeah, I mean, I don't think all of Revel's End is anti-magic, but a good portion of it is, so... Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's take those, then, for later, and then take the boat up the coast, and we can plan on our way. Yeah. Sure. Does that seems, sound good? Seems reasonable. Excellent. Right. Um, anything else that I can provide you with? You could. Yeah, I mean, I know elves don't sleep, but you could get some rest. Uh, working on that. Um, yes. You know, Johnny is very good at paperwork, too. It's Johnny true. is very good at paperwork. He does our books all the time. Do you want me to induct Johnny into the Golden Vault, given the kinds of missions you've been sent on, McSidron? No. Definitely not. <laughs> Unless he's just a paper pusher. And then you can have him. Sometimes. On Fridays. <laughs> you've got to have some paper pushers in there. That's usually what people aspire to be promoted to in our line of oh. work. So you start off as the field agent, and then you move your way up to the handler, and then you move your way up into the paper pusher. Yes, precisely. Mm. Okay, well then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Johnny is far too precious for that. No, and I already tried to snipe Petey and he turned me down. Of course he did! <laughs> He's had several very good offers out, on, out in the streets. Mm. Yeah, I don't imagine he has any need for the likes of us. Um... Right, well, if you all seem willing and set, then I suppose I shall um, send you off on your merry way. Um, Master Axebreaker will probably be uh, being royally entertained by Dave and uh, can get you on a ship as early as tomorrow morning. Possibly sooner if you want to leave sooner than that, but I assume you might want time to go um, pack and whatever else it is you need oh, to do. packed already. 
It is a very convenient thing, isn't it? I <laughs> carrying your entire house with you. Not packed, so I, I, I would prefer an evening to wrap up a couple things. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, then perhaps we all split our separate ways. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Very good. Um, Manuel, are you from around here? Oh yeah, I got a small place in the. Okay. Okay, so you're good. You don't need like a place to stay. No, or I'm anything good. like that. I'm okay. good. Just okay. Drop okay. some stuff. Yeah. Cool. And I guess as we're leaving, there'll be like a moment, turns back. Do they, do they look okay? Is everything? Oh, uh, yes, they're, they're wonderful. Um, I imagine your daughter's a lot taller than the last time you saw her. I wish I could have um, brought them here, but. No, no, no. It didn't they... seem safe. That is a wise call. I know that when you were recruited, at least according to your file, it was mostly out of concern for making sure that they were cared for and getting out from a bad deal. But I think you're a good person, at heart. Takes that in. Miss Tiger. Light bow and leaves. You all have the evening to prepare and uh, get your things ready to set off to Revel's End. And while it is a little earlier than usual, I feel like this is a nice natural point at which we can take a quick break. Hey. So yeah. we are going to take just oh so brief of a break so that five people can use one bathroom, stick around, uh, watch our patron roll and see all the cool people who help support what we do. And we will be back very soon to go to the snowy prison in the middle of nowhere and find a terrible dwarf. Huzzah! Oh boy.